All right, how's it going, podcast family? Uh, welcome everybody back. First podcast of 2024. Hopefully everybody had a outstanding Christmas and New Year. Uh, over the course of Christmas, New Year, and actually uh, up until last week, I've been asked a, a common question. Um, and the question has been, how do I find the best place to train when I transition from location to location? or when I'm on the road traveling. So funny enough, you know, I had this experience over Christmas. Um, my family and I went down to South Florida um, to spend time uh, Christmas and New Year with our family down there. <clears throat> so I, you know, I myself, I might, you know, find myself kind of going through the process of finding a good place uh, to drop into. Um, you know, being in the military, I've been both blessed and cursed with the opportunity to train at quite a few different academies. Uh, I view this as a blessing because I've had the opportunity to train with and learn from some of the best practitioners, you know, the art has, has to offer. I've trained multiple times in uh, different parts of California, San Diego, uh, Central California, Monterey, I've competed all up and down uh, the coast in, in California. You know, I've trained in Virginia a couple of times, trained in North Carolina, and you know, I've traveled to different states from west to east coast doing the cross country trip, moving three times, and I've dropped in at a ton of places. Um, so you know, the the blessing has been I, I've been able to see multiple different styles learn from different people and add and blend some of that into my game. You know, some of it just kind of was cool to watch, cool to see. I take it for what it's worth. Um, didn't add it to my game and some stuff, you know, I still uh, use to this day from just kind of traveling around and training in different places. Um, that's the, the blessing part of it. The curse is you know, because up until Brown, Brown Belt, you know, I was restarting my journey every time I moved and started training at a new place. You know, each time going from California to the East Coast and back three times, up and down the East Coast, out in Hawaii, overseas. Uh, it's been kind of like this start, stop, start, stop. Uh, finally, when I got you know promoted uh, to Brown Belt by Professor Fredson, I said to myself that I was going to stick with you know, Fred, Fritz and Paschal BJJ Association, no matter what, no matter how long it took, you know, whether I went somewhere and, you know, just explained to that, that whatever school I was at, you know, a Fritz and Paschal affiliate, you know, as much as I would love for somebody to promote me, you know, I'll respectfully decline and wait till, you know, I'm either at, you know, with Professor Fredson again and, you know, he deems it time to promote me or I'm at one of his affiliate schools. But that's, that's been kind of, you know, the curse until, again, up until Brown Belt. Uh, and then, you know, later he promoted me to, to Black Belt as well. Um, I'm no longer, you know, posed with the issue of finding a new home gym, per se. You know, as you guys know, I opened my own academy here in Stafford, Virginia last year. Uh, don't really see myself leaving this area for the foreseeable future. Uh, to like move somewhere else, I definitely because of the nature of my job, we'll probably travel and and just going on vacation traveling, and, and we'll still drop into places as long as I'm able to. But I don't see myself having to start all over uh, like I did before. Uh, so rewinding back to last month, uh, Christmas break, you know, like I said, my family and I went down to <clears throat> excuse me, South Florida, the Miami Fort Lauderdale area, and while we're down there. You know, my wife and I decided to, to drop into a local academy to get some mat time in. You know, the first thing I, you know, I still do this. If I'm in an area that I don't really know or is new to me, you know, I'll reach out to the people that I've trained with, people that I know in that area, and I'll ask them, hey, what's the, the best spot to drop into? And that's what we did. Uh, unfortunately, all the places that uh, was, that were recommended to us for like a you know, 45 minute drive away. And as much as I love jujitsu, um, it's hard to explain driving 45 minutes on vacation with my family just to go get some mat time in. So we chose to go to a place that was like five minutes away uh, from my sister-in-law's house. 
uh, which ended up being the, the Maddox Academy um, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Awesome, awesome experience. You know, after we ruled out some of the places that were close by us, um, you know, based off of, you know, distance to drive, their schedule, you know, we were kind of looking for something to drop in in the middle of the day. Didn't want to train at night when we were hanging out. Didn't want to wake up early in the morning. So we were looking at something that, you know, we could drop into around, around lunchtime and just go get some, some mat time in. So uh, we, we found uh, Maddox Academy in Fort Lauderdale in the Davie area or Davie, Florida specific, uh, dropped in and it was an awesome experience. You know, they had been that location, uh, had just opened a couple months ago, uh, prior to us getting there. Um, the owner, uh, Luis was very, uh, receiving, you know, he, um, they, they were on like their Christmas break. So they weren't teaching any classes. They just had like open mat going, which was perfect. You know, I didn't really want to be a student or, you know, being a black belt. Sometimes you get asked to teach when you go to another gym. I didn't want any of that. Uh, I just wanted to go roll. So lucky, luckily it was no gi. So they really didn't know, you know, what, what belt either one of us were walk, walking in, but, uh, super receptive. So. That's, that's been kind of my experience and that's the, the process I use when I'm traveling and I'm looking for places to drop in. Uh, but to rewind back to the question of what process or what do I do to find a new gym when I move to a location? Um, I, I think at this day and age, you, so the, to start off, I think you as an individual, uh, need to define what it is uh, you want to get out of jujitsu. If you're just a hobbyist, um, I, the, the kind of the method that I, I I'm going to explain is more so for the hobbyist. If you're a young and upcoming uh, jujitsu practitioner who has nothing else, uh, no other goals in life at the moment other than uh, to win a world championship, or you know to win ADCC championship, or you know, become a, a super competitive or superior jujitsu athlete. Um, there is a similar method, but it, it's kind of focused different uh, based off of what you're looking for. So for the first that I described, the hobbyist, I think it really boils down to uh, three, three things when you're looking for a new gym, academy, dojo, uh, what have you. The first thing, uh, and I got, you know, I'll list these in like the order of what I would look for is the culture. Um, if, if you, if you walk into an academy, um, uh, and, and it doesn't really seem welcoming, uh, if you get a chance to roll and, you know, the, the people aren't really welcoming on the mats, aren't really, uh, willing to work with you, you know, you're just kind of like a, a death match for, for every role. Um, that, that first experience can be indication, you know, I wouldn't judge everything out of the first experience, but if you go back a couple of times and you get the same vibe, you know, chances are that that's kind of like the, the vibe or the culture in that academy. Uh, most places I've been to, uh, if, if you come in, uh, if you're new, either you're new to the area and have trained before, or you're just new to jujitsu, most academies will give you some type of trial period, you know, I, I do it myself. I think it's very important for uh, a new person new to jujitsu or a new person new to the com community. Um, they come in and, and they just, they're able to kind of try it out. Right. Uh, what we, what we offer, you know, what I offer may not be for them and what they're looking for um, in jujitsu may not you know, align to, to what I'm doing. So no harm, no foul. You do your trial period um, and you kind of go, we, we kind of part ways. So that's that, that I categorize as kind of like the culture. The second thing, you know, we're creatures of habit. So you're probably going to look for something that is in close proximity of your house. You know, you go to Google Maps, you type in jujitsu near me, and you would probably look like uh, a five to 10 mile radius. You know, on average, you know, we frequent uh, stores, shops, restaurants, gas stations, um, you know, places that cater to our hobby. We frequent places that are within a five to 10 mile radius. I don't think you're going to find your jujitsu academy uh, to be different from that, right? So you're going to look for something that's in close proximity uh, and you're also going to, or close proximity and or commute time, right? If it's taking you uh, 30, 45 minutes 
one way to get to uh, to get to jujitsu. Um, that that may deter some people. Uh, there was a point in time when I was in Monterey, you know, kind of like the wake or the height of COVID. I was driving 30 minutes just to get some night time in. That's all that was available in the area. I was happy to do so. I wouldn't normally do that, you know, if, if I was looking for somewhere to go. But given the nature of being in California with a shelter in place, um, most academies closed or either kind of, you know, doing some stuff underground with only, you know, a small group of people that they knew or trust trustworthy, which was, you know, it is what it is. I would probably would have done the same thing. Um, but it was just hard to find places. So in that case, you know, I probably would have gone to somewhere outside of the normal proximity or commute time. So the second second thing being proximity to your residence, proximity to where you live and work, or your commute time. And then the third thing, um, I think there's a cost of training. You know, you're, you're not with with jujitsu, you kind of get what you pay for, right? If, if you're um, if you're going to you know a random place that that really not not really well known, uh, not not really accredited per se, you know, uh, maybe some questionable you know technique or methods of teaching, but it's like twenty dollars uh, for jujitsu. You know, either that person is very well off and they're just able to offer that price, uh, or maybe you know you're kind of paying for for what you're getting in the quality of, of jujitsu. Uh, going back to you know the trial period, I don't know any uh, academy dojo that that I've been to or that I would go to who don't offer you some type of free trial period up front. You know, any place that you walk into and immediately they're trying to trap you into, uh, you know, uh, six six months to one year contract. You know, uh, I myself would be kind of kind of weary of that because you don't know anything about them unless it's an affiliate that you've been to before, well known, and, and you know that's the affiliation that you're a part of. You just move to a different city, sure, but uh, for first time going in, or you know nothing about them, they know nothing about you. You've never trained before. I, I find it kind of hard to to pressure somebody into a long term contract in that first experience. But that's that's just me. So that's just kind of that's kind of for the hobbyists, right? You're looking for somewhere that it, all in all is convenient, whether it be uh, convenient, it fits in with the culture, the vibe that that you, you know, the way you carry yourself, the people you surround yourself with, the proximity to your house is not super inconvenient, especially if you have kids to train. You know, I have a, a, quite a few families that train, so you know the kids come in and train at six o'clock. Um, and then, you know, the parents will either stick around with the kids or, you know, they'll run the kids home real quick and then they'll come back to the seven o'clock class. We have a buffer in between our kids and adults class that allows some people to do that. So if you live pretty close, you know, that 15 minute buffer in between class, you have plenty of time to go, you know, drop your kids off and then come back for adults class. Uh, th that can be cumbersome if, um, you know, if you're farther away, if you're driving, you know, 30 minutes one way, your kids and yourself or your entire family trains, you know, everybody's there together for, for a few hours training, which can be cool. Um, but if it's in the evening, you know, on a school night, you probably want to get your kids back and get them ready uh, for the next day. So proximity matters. And then uh, for the cost, you know, part, that's, you know, that, that can, again, uh, be, be a burden on, you know, if you're paying a couple hundred bucks per person, um, and you want you have multiple kids that train, and you want to train yourself. Uh, that that can be kind of kind of um, cumbersome. So all in all, you know, you kind of boil it down to the the vibe that you get when you when you walk in. You know, if the people are cool, you know, you kind of you're digging the vibe when you walk in. It's not too far away from your house. Maybe you got a couple red lights, traffic. You know, maybe it takes you, you know, ten to fifteen or fifteen to twenty minutes. Not not too bad uh, to get there. And then the cost of training, you know, you set aside a cost in your budget for, you know, however many people or just yourself to train. If it fits within that budget, then I think you've aligned the stars and you probably found the, the right place. But even in doing so, I would try multiple places. So if you go into one place up front and, you know, the culture is, is awesome, the vibe is awesome, there's some close proximity to your house, you know, you can kind of live with the cost of training. 
Uh, so maybe it's a little, little bit, you know, 25, you know, bucks outside of your, your budget for, for training or activities. Um, try, try another place, you know, do some research, ask other people that you trust to know, uh, that train as well. You'd be surprised at the, the recommendations that you'll get by just asking around. Um, but, but if I were, you know, back to moving from coast to coast, duty station to duty station or city to city, and I had to look for uh, somewhere to train as a hobbyist, then that would, those three uh, factors will probably be the top things that I look for. Uh, switching gears to, you know, the, the other type of practitioner that I talked about, uh, maybe you're a young, young and upcoming, you know, practitioner, you started off in one place, uh, you know, maybe you've, you know, feel like you've kind of, um, you know, learned all you can learn, or you, you've kind of reached the, you know, the, the capacity of what that academy or, or gym has to offer, um, and you're moving to an, a new location, or uh, you've been training there for a long time, doing well, you've, you know, competed, have been successful, and for whatever reason, you know, either school, your family, job takes you somewhere else, and, and you're looking for a, a new place to train, but, but you're not quite a hobbyist, you, you may be you want to make this a profession. Uh, for that individual, you know, it, it really, for that person, what you're looking for is, you know, a, a place that can offer you, you know, kind of like the, the championship experience or the championship training that you need uh, to push yourself or excel to, to the next level. I'm currently reading uh, Robert Drysdale's book about the evolution of jujitsu, where he, you know, focuses uh, and, and credits Carlson Gracie for largely developing the competition side of jiu-jitsu. And in there, he talks about, you know, um, the tr traditional Gracie path was to, you know, teach jiu-jitsu in private lessons. Well, I would say the traditional, but the original path was to kind of teach smaller groups in private setting and, and really keep it within the Gracie family. But you know, Carlson Gracie kind of being a renegade and black sheep broke off and and open it up to everybody, you know, with the goal of building the best competitors. Um, you, you don't build the best competitors by limiting who you have in your academy. You open it up to everybody. You know, if somebody comes in who's who's challenging your technique or challenging uh, your students in a different way, I would welcome that person, man. I want that person in my in my academy to help to better us all, you know. And when you're looking for you know, if you're a professional practitioner, if you were looking for a new place to train, uh, that's what I would look for. Look for a place that challenges you the most. And then maybe you go back to the other three that I mentioned, you know, look at the culture. There are some places that, you know, even though they offer the, the, the most challenging experience and preparation uh, to be a world champ, Jiu Jitsu or IBJJF world champion, ADCC world champion, or just all around a uh, high level grappler, maybe the culture is off, man. Maybe there's some things going on behind the scenes that you really don't agree with or vibe with. You know, you only know that when you kind of hang around for a little while and get to know the people. So definitely pay attention to the culture. You know, proximity, if you're, you know, if you're still, if you aspire to be a professional grappler practitioner, but you're still working a nine to five to kind of feed your, your habit or, or your dream, uh, it, it'll be tough, you know, going, 45 minutes to an hour away to train. Meanwhile, you still have to, you know, show up to work or you know, maybe you're in college, uh, show up to school and get everything else done. That, that can become cumbersome. So, you know, you, you might want to pay attention to the proximity or your commute time. And then definitely if you're you know, a younger individual, maybe in college or, you know, you, you're working to, to fund your dream of uh, becoming a world champion, the cost of training is definitely not going to matter, you know. Depending on where you're at in your jiu-jitsu journey, if you're a higher, you know, higher level grappler, or higher level belt, you know, maybe you can offer uh, to teach some classes, you know, kids classes or some of the classes that, and you know, in exchange for a discount on your membership, or you know, some some academies will allow you to, you know, train for free if you're teaching a, a certain number of classes. So, again, those are really the two avenues that I would break it down to. Uh, I'm sure there's, you know, other aspects that people look for when they look for places to train, people to train with. But uh, to me, those are, are really the, the top priority, with the first one being the most important, the culture. Man, you can go to a place that has, you know, 
a, a long laundry list of world champions, but if the culture, if the, or if the, you know, their their morals and ethics in that place are, are off, uh, I want absolutely nothing to do with it. I don't care how good the technique is. Uh, being a good human being, I, I I weigh more than being the best grappler, the best best jujitsu practitioner. So, uh, first podcast of the year, 2024. Um, hopefully this was helpful. This answered the questions to the students and multiple people have asked me about it. Um, when I post this, love to hear some feedback. If you got other ways that uh, you go through and, and weigh, you know, one place over another, I'd love to hear it. I'm always open to uh, some more recommendations and, and hearing everybody's side. So look forward to hearing from you and look out for the next podcast.